Rohan, uh, thank you very much for that uh, rather flattering introduction. Um, I want to thank the Defense Secretary, uh, service chiefs amongst whom are many old friends, uh, and others with whom I've had the pleasure of reconnecting. Um, Rohan is quite right. Um, I was thinking on the plane as I was flying here that my first visit here was in 1989, and again in 1990. And I say that only because, as in common with so many people in this room, I lost uh, many friends from both communities, from all communities, during this dreadful and recently concluded war. Um, so that I have, in a sense, perhaps more than usually for um, a Westerner, um, a real personal interest in the success of national reconciliation. Um, and my words to follow are the words of uh, a very fortunately free human being. I've been out of the American government now for about 20 months. It's wonderful to breathe free and to have your own opinion. National really con reconciliation, you know, is a very, very difficult thing to do. In my earlier career as a, as a journalist, I went to many places that were in very deep conflict. And I can tell you that it's been a very mixed result national reconciliation. We can look at Myanmar, where I'm traveling in about three days, where the national reconciliation effort continues, not just with minorities, but also with the estranged middle classes there in the country by the military. National reconciliation, as our Indonesian friends know, has been a hard-won uh, effort in Aceh, but the signs are promising. National reconciliation for our friends from India, for our friends from Malaysia, is difficult and often it seems to slide back as much as it goes forward. And I but say also that in the two countries I call home, the United States and New Zealand, both have had experiences in national reconciliation. The Americans, of course, 150 years ago, the Civil War began and that national reconciliation is still working its way through. And in New Zealand, the Polynesian population forcibly dispossessed of its land, went through, beginning about 20 years ago, a, a process of reconciliation. In other words, it's something that's ongoing and doesn't change. Now, this government here in Sri Lanka has been explaining to you the domestic policy of achieving and consolidating reconciliation, and I don't wish to speak about that today. I want to speak instead about some regional and global determinants that are propitious, we hope, to consolidating that reconciliation. The regional dimension, and as we know, Mr. Secretary, we're all prisoners of geography, um, is very clear, but I believe it's positive. Even the global dimension in which not just the Tamil diaspora, but many other diasporas jostle for advantage and for influence in Western capitals mainly, that is now something that is changing as well, with a disinclination to interfere in conflicts that are a great deal more subtle than some of the constituencies would suggest. So broadly, I think that there are favorable trends, and I want in the remaining time to outline some of those to you. I think, obviously, the closest regional dimension that Sri Lanka has is its northern neighbor. But I think there, it's fair to say that a mixture of adroit diplomacy and a favorably inclined government in Delhi has certainly helped keep this vital relationship in place. Um, that, in, in addition, is supplemented by what was, in retrospect, some very bad strategic moves by the LTTE that alienated many constituencies in um, the south of India and certainly had, since the 1980s, alienated the military and political elite in Delhi. So, in one sense, that, I think, is a positive thing. Will it remain in place? We can speak about that in a moment. I think there's some other things that enable Sri Lanka to feel reasonably comfortable about the approaching three or four years. I think one thing, and our General Nasir mentioned it very well indeed, is the necessary preoccupation with the Afghan involvement, profoundly destabilizing to his country and to others as well. But whatever happens there, you can be very sure that Delhi's attention will be primarily focused on the Northwest. And I think that this means that uh, the breathing 
phase is um, likely to be extended. The American phase in the chronic series of wars in Afghanistan since 1979 will be drawing to an end beginning after the presidential election in the January period next year. Uh, in my own personal opinion, whatever is said about strict times of uh, departure. And this in turn will guarantee a period where the national reconciliation in this country, assuming it proceeds without contest and without visible upset, will be um, accepted and even welcomed in nearby capitals. Um, something else that's kind of important, I think, for um, American and Western thoughts about this region is that the improvement in the identification of overlapping interests that the United States has had with India, which I helped to shepherd in a, in a small and modest way when I was in the Pentagon, means that there is a diminution of Indian suspicions about what the United States is doing in this region. All we have to do is think about the way Indira Gandhi and other people would react almost in a Pavlovian sense, you know, whenever the United States was attempting to follow an initiative with some of its closer neighbors. Those days have changed, and I think it's a good thing as well. Um, and then finally, and this is a general point about separatist-minded people who tend to employ terroristic means of um, achieving their goals, since 9-11, I think it's fair to say that the global climate is profoundly inimical uh, and hostile to the advancing of separatist aims by those means. And it was the bad luck, quote unquote, of the LTTE that its cause became entwined with the global war on terror or whatever it was called afterwards because they were fighting an uphill battle. Will the trends that I'm mentioning continue to be favorable? I think they will. Um, there are some risks. The risk of uh, misunderstanding uh, in South India about the national enterprise and the project here in Sri Lanka is, is always there. But I think so far it's been handled very, very well. Um, I think that people also forget, though, to be fair, and, and they forget in Sri Lanka that had the BJP-led coalition won the last general election, there could have been, I'm not saying there would have been, but there were signs that there might have been a rather abrupt change in Indian attitudes. This is profoundly something to be resisted because it would have been something that was speaking to a rather simplistic view of an identification co-religiously with part of this country's population. In my remaining thoughts, I want to, in this place to the abstract that you have in your book, I want to talk a little bit about why the post heavy American footprint phase in Afghanistan is probably um, something that will help the regional environment and help in particular Sri Lanka to continue its process of reconciliation. I think it, the abstract puts it out fairly clearly that we're in a phase in the United States where after a decade of protracted land wars that um, were problematic, let's put it that way, that there is going to be a resumption of an offshore maritime bias in our attitude to power balancing in Asia. I think this is something that's good for everyone, including people that some of the more extreme think tanks in Washington would like to identify as a future enemy. No countries mentioned, but I think it's a very simplistic attitude that we are preoccupied, uh, other countries are emerging more forcefully, that there needs to be some kind of rivalry. I don't believe it. So the United States is going to be in a position where we will continue to use all means at our disposal to advance ends that are global, but that those global ends haven't changed. They're about freedom of navigation and working with other countries to prevent the rise of any hegemonic power. But that's not new. That's been something that's been in place for the last century and a half. Finally, some other thoughts about trends in the region. I think Sri Lanka Excuse me, I've had a long flight, so I'm feeling a bit dry. Sri Lanka is very well positioned in an economic sense to do some interesting things regionally. With assistance from China and other countries, Habantota has become a very interesting midway point in shipping lanes. There is looming a very, very big revolution in transport economics and the ability to refit, refurbish, uh, and eventually do some things in an intermediate sense in the Indian Ocean is Sri Lanka's to, to take. 
Moreover, in the eastern half of the Indian Ocean, Sri Lankan um, blocks that have been out, put out for auction in hydrocarbons are, if you look at it and step back in the Bay of Bengal and eastern part of the Indian Ocean, there is an area of prospectivity that goes up to the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, the Bay of Bengal, and now the recently delineated lines between Bangladesh and Myanmar. Again, think regionally, and I think the trends favor Sri Lanka, and specifically, they favor an improvement in the economic rates of growth because of those advantages that will play to the benefit of national reconciliation. I think that in closing, it's worthwhile stressing that national reconciliation is not something that is done formulaically. There's been a big industry in Washington and other places that points to you know, counterinsurgency or um, counterterrorism or some sort of a menu of approaches that somehow reconcile uh, a group or part of a group of people in a country that had opted for separatist tactic, uh, tactics and reconcile them to rejoining the national community. Um, it's not easy, and as I've attempted to tell you, there's the risk of slippage at any particular time. But in conclusion, I think the, the landscape of risk for Sri Lanka in this regard is favorable. And um, speaking specifically about US and Sri Lankan relationships, and again, although I'm peripherally involved with one of the presidential campaigns, I won't tell you which one, um, uh, I'm looking forward to a time when single issue um, categorization of Sri Lanka recedes over time and we have a full spectrum relationship that's consistent with the interests that I've attempted to describe to you today. Thank you for your patience and I look forward to having a chance to answer some questions.